It's time for the chicken attack. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Monique, I'm a classical pianist, and today we are going to talk about the one and only legendary, mysterious chicken move. <laughs> All of you must have seen pianists, me included, who are doing very strange movements with their arms. Some of you think it's just show, it looks stupid, and others people think that it looks very elegant. You know, I'm not doing these things to look in a specific way. I'm doing these things to sound in a specific way and that's the most important thing. <laughs> I mean, if you're not doing these movements, you're massively forced to give up. If you do these movements but in the wrong way, then you are massively forced. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I just love this song. <laughs> so today's video is going to be a piano quick tip that hopefully is going to help you to improve your movements at the piano and to understand why you need to do specific movements. Without further ado, let's get started with the chicken movement. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, now first of all, for everyone who thought playing piano just means to move your fingers around, that's a little bit too less. We need to move our wrist, our elbow, our shoulder, basically our whole body, at least the upper body. By using our wrists and elbows, we are basically controlling the weight that we put into the key. So a very simple explanation would be, the lower the wrist, the more weight you put into the key, the higher the wrist, the less weight there is. And if you use your wrist and elbow, you can control the dynamics in a very detailed way. And this is going to help us to create phrasing at the piano and to create a singing sound, the cantabile sound. So this is why we are actually using the wrist and elbow and we want to stay as flexible as possible. Now, actually, I'm not a huge fan of calling this the chicken movement because if I think about how I would pretend to be a chicken, <laughs> Basically, I would move my elbow into my body. I don't really see anything that I'm doing with my wrist and that's actually not enough. So I thought, what is another movement that could actually show what we are doing at the piano? And therefore, we are going to my kitchen now. Welcome to my kitchen. So to demonstrate the movement that you actually need to do, I prepared some eggs <laughs> just to stay in the chicken topic. My God, this is going to be the first time I'm opening an egg in front of a camera. No pressure. Okay, you know what? I'll just open it now. So basically, don't look at me. Ta-da! <laughs> oh my God, I did it. <laughs> so what do we learn out of this movement? We want to have a low wrist and we want to let our elbow guide the way. So the elbow goes first and everything comes after. That's basically the movement that we need at the piano. And every time you want to create a cantabile sound or you want to phrase something in a specific way, think of this movement. Think of pushing your arms away from your body and let your arms guide the way. So let me show you very quick how this works at the piano. So as I said before, we never want to push into our body, we always want to go away from our body. Starting with a low wrist and letting the arm guide us. So for example, when I'm having two notes and I want to phrase it. These two notes are created with one movement. It means the first note starts with a low wrist and we are gliding into the second note with this movement. So like... And by doing this, you're getting the connection very easily. Ta-da! Now, of course, the more notes you have, the more complicated it's going to be. So I'll also demonstrate it with like a couple of more notes now. So let's just add some more notes. For example, all these notes are getting into one movement. By doing these things, you can hear that every note is having a slightly different dynamic. So the first one has more weight and the last one has less weight. Meaning all the little notes in between are getting another amount of weight of arm into the key. And this is going to create very detailed dynamics. One of my favorite examples to learn this type of movement is Chopin's Opus 25 number one etude.
Now, of course, I know that you can't see all the details that I was showing before with the wrist and the elbow. You are just seeing very, very subtle movements. And that's because the faster you play, the smaller the movements get. And this is also why I would not recommend to just watch professionals play piano. A big mistake is then to just trying to imitate everything that you see. However, you can't see all the details. And this is also why you can't really understand what you are doing. And then the result is not going to sound the same way. So for every phrase you have to think about, how many notes do I put into one movement and when is the next movement starting? And that has a lot to do with breathing. And we are not going to cover this topic today because it's just way too much. <laughs> so to round it up, never push your arms into your body, always away from your body. Use your wrist, use your elbow, use your shoulders. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to support me and this channel. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description box. Remember, if you're not doing these movements, you're going to be... This channel is going to turn into a cooking channel. <laughs> Ooh, it's perfect. I can't cook. <laughs>